Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this hour long yoga practice. So it has been a while since I've done a 60 minute flow here on my channel and in my app. So very excited to be teaching you today and guiding you through this practice, which is gonna have a good blend of balance, flexibility, and strength. We're going to move fairly slowly, not rushing anything. And hopefully by the end, you should feel really good in your body. No props are needed, and I would say this is best suited for intermediate students. So let's start lying down on our backs. And we're gonna start with our legs out, pretty much just in Shavasana, our corpse pose. But rather than having our arms down by our sides, if you'd like, you can invite a gentle opening through your shoulders and through your upper back and chest by reaching your arms up overhead and still press your shoulders down and away from your ears. And so as we flow, we'll try to maintain a steady breath rhythm. So see if you can establish this pattern right now, finding a length of inhale and exhale that feels comfortable and natural. And try to breathe in and out through your nose, sending this breath all the way down to your low belly and low back. Take a few more breaths here. Really feeling into every area of your body. Noticing where there might be tension or tightness. Noticing what parts might need a little bit more care and attention today. And you can just bend your knees, bring the soles of your feet together to touch, stretch your arms out a little bit further out, really lengthen out Supta Baddha Konasana, your reclined bound angle, reclined butterfly. Oh, <laughs> don't know if you heard that. Sometimes my hip gets stuck a little. So make any little adjustments. And you're going to interlace your fingers above your head and just release your index fingers so they're pointing up and the other ones are wrapping and clasping. And we're gonna inhale to stretch and lift. And as you exhale, you're gonna bring your knees together to touch and curl to lift up. So just like this a few more times. Inhale, lower down, open the knees. Exhale, lift and curl up little bit of core activation draw the floating ribs in inhale lengthen exhale pull it in last one like this inhale arms overhead exhale curl and lift up stay up nice and high you might need to widen your feet so they're hip width distance apart and just bring your hands over towards your right thigh Hold where you are. You want to still be able to breathe deeply and see if you can extend and straighten your left leg, keeping your knees at the same height. Flex through your foot. Bring that left foot back down. Bring your hands, your arms over to the left. Same thing. You're still lifted in this crunch and straighten your right leg. Both shoulder blades off the floor. Right foot comes down and release all the way down. Bring your right knee in towards your belly and you can straighten your left leg to the mat. Just stretching into our hip flexors, 
You can roll a little bit through your right ankle, flexing and pointing your toes. Try to press your shoulders into the floor. No tension through your neck. And we'll carry this through over into a twist so you can bring your right knee over towards the left side of your mat. Maybe use your left hand to guide it along. Reach your right arm out to the side. And I'm going to intensify this just because I like to do that variation. I'm going to straighten my right leg and slide my left hand further down towards the shin or towards the ankle. If this is too much, keep your right knee bent. Feel that little bit of fire that we've started to create in the belly. Slow, steady breaths. And bend your right knee if you had the leg straight like what I'm doing here. And come all the way back through to center. And before we do this on the other side, you can widen your right knee towards your right shoulder. And maybe you're just working here. Or you can take your half happy baby pose, holding on to your big right toe or the outer foot as you align your ankle over your knee and use your elbow to push it open a little bit here. It might be too much for you to have your left leg straight, in which case you can bend and keep your foot flat to the floor. Just a big thigh stretch. And let's release. Right leg straightens out in front of you. Let's bring our left knee in towards the chest. Just checking in to our hip flexors, maybe roll your ankle. Into your twist, so you're gonna cross your left knee over your body towards the right. Reach your left arm out to the side, and maybe you stay as you are, or you can straighten your left leg and slide your right hand further down. And even though I'm saying to straighten the leg, I'm still bending my knee a little bit here. We are just warming up, so it's totally normal for the hamstrings and our hips to still be quite stiff and tight. Try not to push yourself too much throughout this class. Make this nurturing. One more big breath. And bend into your knee. We'll find that variation of Ananda Balasana, half happy baby pose. So you can open your left knee towards your shoulder. Maybe you stay here or you stack the ankle over the knee. Try to push your right hip bone down so you're not totally rolling over to the left. So your weight is evenly distributed through both hips and both shoulders. And let's release. You might straighten that left leg, but one last thing here, we're gonna bend so both feet are flat to the floor, just setting up for a bridge pose, Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. Push your feet into the floor, squeeze your seat to lift your hips, low back and mid back off the floor. Hug in slightly through your inner thighs. Keep that strong activation as you push your heels into the ground and drag them back towards your shoulders. Relax your neck. Full deep breath here and we'll unwind and go nice and slow one vertebra at a time lowers down to the mat with control and you can pull your knees to your belly let's come on up and come into your tabletop pose on hands and knees just coming through cat and cow, nice and simple, spread your fingertips wide, push into your fingertips and knuckles. As you inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze, tailbone up, reverse this motion as you breathe out. And just keep going at your own pace. Nice 
A few more, getting this through your upper back, your mid back, your low back. Last one. And let's come back to our neutral tabletop pose. So from here, I want you to really engage your lower belly, pull it in. Your spine, your back should be flat and parallel to the floor. We're gonna reach our right leg back, roll that right hip down, and then extend your left arm forward. Your thumb is pointing up. And you're trying to lift out of your right shoulder and really see if you can keep your spine nice and flat. Maybe you choose to stay here or you come into your tiger pose stretch by bending your right knee, reaching your left hand back and hold on to the foot if you can and you're gonna kick to lift that knee up even higher. Remember, you can just stay in your balancing tabletop pose instead. And let's release this just by extending the right leg back behind us, push into that heel so you're stretching into your calf stretching into the toes and lean your weight so that you have your shoulders once more over your wrists roll to the inner edge of that right foot and extend your right arm up to the sky so a variation of vashistasana modified side plank keep one shoulder directly over the other again maybe you want to stay where you are if you'd like to add on you're going to float that right leg off the mat getting your heel to be just as high as your hip. And if you'd like one more option, you can add another bind here by bending your right knee. This time your right hand reaches for your right foot. So a little bow pose stretch here, push and kick your foot into your palm. Try not to let your foot lift higher than your hip or higher than your knee. Big breath in here. And let's release tabletop pose, round it out. And before we go and do the same thing on the second side, we're gonna flow from a push up back into a child's pose. So you can lean your way forward, really engage through your belly. You're gonna exhale to push down, push up and press back into a child's pose. And let's do that four more times. So inhale, modified plank, Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, press up. Exhale, child's pose. Three more, go at your own pace. Two more. Last one. Strong through your belly, strong through your arms. You got this and press it back. From this child's pose, let your hips come back onto your heels. As you lift on up, you can bring your fingertips back behind you and just squeeze your shoulder blades together. Keep your elbows bent and imagine you're trying to pinch them in and get them to touch one another as you float and lift your heart up. So big stretch and release. Getting that heart rate up and let's release tabletop pose. We'll go repeat balancing table on the second side. So stay strong, flat back. This time your left leg extends back. Roll that left hip down. Pull your lower belly in. Reach your right arm forward. Bicep along the ear, thumb pointing directly up. Keep your gaze steady. Maybe you want to hold and stay here or you can add your bind, tiger pose, bend that left knee, grab a hold of the right foot and see if you can kick to lift it up. Try not to let your left knee splay open to the side here. And as we release, you're gonna bring your right hand back down, just straighten your left leg and push back into that heel. I'm just gonna shift a little forward on my mat here. You can rock a little back and forth. And we'll find our modified side plank, Vashisasana. Roll onto your right hand. Make sure your left foot is flat to the floor before reaching your left arm up. 
This is option one. Option two is to float and lift that left leg up at hip height. And finally, option three is to add your bind. So like a side tiger, kind of a mix between side plank and bow. Big breath in here and release back through all fours and we'll take five more of those little push-ups to child's pose so you might need to readjust your stance here start in this modified plank super strong through your core down up and press it back four more like this inhale forward exhale lower inhale push up exhale hips back three more at your own pace Two more. Last one. And release. Stretch it out in this child's pose. And you can let your hips sink on your heels. That same thing again here. Lift your chest up. Bring your hands, fingertips back behind you. Open up through your chest. And let's release, come into our first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So a little wider stance here, hands are shoulder width distance apart before you lift your hips up and back and make any little movements here that you would like. Try to get as comfortable as possible in this pose. See if you can curl your tailbone up a little bit more We'll walk our feet to the top of the mat. Widen your feet a little bit so they're aiming more towards the sides of the mat. Your toes should still be pointing forward. Find your ragdoll fold. So relax your head, relax your neck, any arm variation that you want here. And maybe your legs are straight, maybe they're bent. Just make sure there's no discomfort in your lower back. And use this as an opportunity to fully relax your neck. Slow, steady breaths in and out through your nose. Now go ahead and release your hands to the mat. Keep your legs as they are. We'll come into bear pose, which is kind of like a variation of chair. So you're gonna bend your knees until you have your thighs parallel to the floor and you're also trying to keep your spine straight and parallel to the mat. Maybe you have your hands on the ground, maybe you wanna intensify by reaching your arms to the sides or make it even harder by reaching your arms up overhead. So not a chair where our hips are down and our chest is up. This time we're trying to keep our chest and our hips at that same height with a 90 degree angle bend in our knees. Three deep breaths, you got this. I know it's a tough one. Into Malasana, your yogi squat, heels in, toes out. Let your hips come down. Should feel nice to just release that. Hands at your heart to push your knees open a little bit wider. Slowing down your breath, slowing down your heart rate. We'll be making our way up to stand, transitioning through ragdoll pose first. So you can bend your knees and start to lift on up and just push into your heels to roll all the way up, coming up to stand, head and shoulders lifting, roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. You want your feet to be about hip width distance apart or so. We're just gonna take a side bend before we flow. Left hand down your left thigh and you can reach your right arm up and over. Let your right hip push out to the side. Just a big stretch. 
Coming all the way back up, same thing on the other side, right hand and right arm down, left arm reaches up and over, push into your left hip. Rising back up. Let's bring our elbows, the arms out in front of us, bent at a 90 degree angle, just a little cat and cow from here to really isolate and work through our upper back. So as you inhale, cactus with the arms, squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. And on the exhale, round and contract, really isolate the upper body. A few more like this. Keep your belly engaged, inhale and exhale. Last one. Exhale, curl in and let's release. Inhale, arms reach up. Swan dive, fold forward and down. Exhale, halfway lift, flat back. Plant your palms, plank pose. And we're gonna lower all the way to our belly. Hold here, point your toes back once you're there. Three little baby cobras, inhale. Chin, chest, palms come up. Exhale down, two more. Inhale, squeeze and lift and release. Last one, inhale, lift. Exhale, release, plant your palms, find a full cobra pose this time. You wanna keep your elbows bent, push your hip bones into the floor, elbows in, and release, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Lifting up and back. Stretch it out here. And we can reach our right leg up to the sky, bend your knee if that's comfortable. You can just keep it straight if that's what you prefer. See if you can push a little bit more into that left heel. And we'll find our low lunge on Janiyasana. Right foot to the top of the mat. Back knee comes down, your knee is over your ankle. And we're gonna push down to lift on up. And you can plant your palms together, looking past your thumbs. Think of lifting out of your lower back. Circle your arms wide, hands to the mat. Let's straighten that right leg. Ardha Hanumanasana, your half splits. We'll add a twist from here. So left hand and left fingertips should be underneath your shoulder. Flex that front foot and reach your right arm up to the sky. Different way of really working our lower body while integrating this twist. Come back through to center, same thing. And now this time, just let your hips sink all the way back onto that left heel and we're gonna fold. And you can make this a little bit more passive. We're gonna stay here for a full five slow, steady breaths. I'm letting my spine round a little. Just letting gravity pull me deeper into the pose. And you can lift your head and chest up. We'll start to bend into that front knee again. And you can widen your stance a little bit, tuck the back toes under, lift your back knee off the mat, and we're gonna reach the left arm forward, right arm back. And see if you can keep your stomach lifted off of your thigh slightly, just so you're not collapsing your weight fully here. Into your easy twist, left hand down, right arm up. Into your gecko pose, bring your right hand to the inside of that right foot. You might need to toe heel and widen your stance a little. And I'm gonna keep my back knee lifted for this one, just working on melting the hips and pelvis down. You might want to rock a little back and forth. You can always come down onto your forms as well to intensify this stretch. Keeping some buoyancy in your hips. Still pushing down into your big right toe. Let's step it back, downward facing dog, right foot steps back to meet the left. 
and maybe you'd like to hang out here or if you'd like you can take a vinyasa inhale flowing through plank pose exhale chaturanga cobra or your upward facing dog and we meet back into our down dog repeating the sequence on the second side left leg rises maybe with your bent knee or you can choose to keep your left leg straight if you prefer push down into your right heel on Janiyasana, your low lunge left foot to the top of the mat back knee comes down my knee is over my ankle and i'm pushing to lift on up pressing the hands together and looking past your thumbs Try not to sink or collapse into your lower back here. We're trying to lengthen the sides of our waist. Circle the hands back down. Let's straighten our left leg. Half splits, Ardha Hanumanasana. Square off through your hips and pelvis here. Make sure your right hand is underneath your shoulder and add your twist left arm up if you can't breathe here you've twisted a little too far bring your left hand back down and we're just gonna sink our hips all the way back on that right heel and fold and release Using this time in the pose to catch your breath, to slow down your heart rate, to refocus and recommit. Let's start to lift back up, bend into that front knee. And you can widen your stance a little bit here. Lift your back knee off the floor. Make sure left knee is over your ankle. And we're gonna reach right arm forward, left arm back. So I'm not collapsing all the way down. I'm trying to find somewhat of a diagonal line. Squeezing into that glute, into your easy twist. So right hand plants down, left arm stretches up to the sky. into your gecko pose bring your left hand to the inside of your left foot and you can just rock a little bit here melting down through your hips soften your shoulders away from your ears maybe you choose to do this from your forearms If you were down on your forearms, lift back up and we meet downward facing dog. Maybe you choose to hang out here or you take your flow. Plank, flowing down, open up, and downward facing dog. From this downward dog, let's reach our right leg up. You could keep it straight and squared. We're just gonna transition into our high lunge. So right foot steps forward, feet are hip width distance apart as you lift on up. Try to keep your hips and pelvis squared here. Extending your arms up overhead, really bending into that front knee, trying to stay stable here. And you can bring your hands together at the front of your heart. Let's add our prayer twist. You're gonna bring your left elbow to the top of your right knee and try to push away, push against that right thigh so you're keeping your belly lifted rolling your right shoulder back even more and now looking down towards the mat you can bring both hands down to frame that front foot and straighten your right leg pyramid pose push back into that back heel Relax your head and shoulders. 
And you can bend into that front knee a little bit more here. We're gonna step forward to the top of the mat. Halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold and reverse your swan dive to come up. So lead with your heart, inhale. Exhale, bring your palms together to touch. Let's find our tree pose, Rikshasana from here. So stand strong on that right leg and you can bring your left foot anywhere to the inside of that leg that you'd like. Maybe your toes stay on the mat for more support. And see if you can really feel your right thigh push against your left foot. And maybe you decide to open up through your arms. Slow, steady breaths here. Bring your hands back through to center. We're gonna challenge our balance a little more. This time you're just gonna cross your left ankle to the top of that right knee into your standing pigeon pose. You're bending that right knee, sending your hips back, reaching your chest forward. If you wanna focus on balance, you're gonna stay where you are. If you wanna focus on flexibility, see if you can bring your fingertips down to the mat. If you had your hands down, we transition back up and through the pose we were in before. Go ahead and lift all the way back up through to center and release, shake it out. Let's take our vinyasa, inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. You can step or hop back. I prefer to just step back to plank. I find it's better for my shoulders and for my elbows. We all meet back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, ready for the sequence on the second side. Let's reach our left leg up to the sky, straight and squared. Stepping it through, high lunge, Ashta Chandrasana. Feet are hip width distance apart. Make sure your shoulders are aligned over the tops of your hips, your lower abdominals are hugging in before you lift up and engage through your arms. So really feeling that energy move up through the feet, travel up the body and shoot all the way up through your fingertips. So every little muscle engaged and activated. Hands at heart center will initiate our twist. So your hips still face forward. It's really just your upper body that's gonna twist. Right elbow lightly placed to the top of your knee and try to push yourself up a little higher so you're not collapsing your upper body down and push out into your left knee a little. So this is a strong pose. Looking down to the floor into your pyramid stretch, you can bring your hands down and just straighten that left leg, push back into your right heel as you fold. You can lift your head and chest up, bend into your front knee just so you can step to the top of the mat. Halfway lift, flat back, fold it down, reverse your swan dive, lead with your heart. Hands together, Rikshasana on the second side. So you're gonna lean your weight on your left leg, bring your right foot wherever is appropriate to the inside of that leg, push your left hip in towards your foot. Try not to grip your toes into the mat. I know that can be tricky. And any arm variation that you want here. The key to good balance 
well, there's a lot that goes into it, but your gaze really helps. So try to keep it still and focused on something in front of you, something that is not moving. And we'll come from here into standing pigeon pose so you can bring your hands to your heart. And we're just gonna cross that right ankle over the top of our left knee, start to bend into that left knee as you send your hips back and move your chest forward. Maybe you hold here, or you can go deeper into your right hip by bringing your fingertips down to the floor. And go ahead and lift up with your chest, come back out the same way we came in. And let's really shake it out, take your flow. Inhale, arms wide, fold down all the way. Exhale, halfway lift, flat back. Plant your palms, step or hop back, go through your vinyasa. We all meet Adho Mukha Svanasana. <sighs> Let's go ahead and reach our right leg up to the sky, bend your knee, open up your hip. And now maybe you choose to stay here if you'd like to transition to your wild thing. You're gonna drop that right foot back behind you, push your hips up, push into your feet, reach that right arm up and over. and carefully transition back out. We're coming to Virabhadrasana two, your warrior two. So right foot steps to the top of the mat, back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat, push your feet into the floor to lift on up. <sighs> Try to stay steady here. We're gonna interlace our hands behind our lower back, Roll your shoulders back, lift up through your chest and dive forward and down, humble warrior, reaching your knuckles up and over. Keep your head nice and heavy. Come all the way back up through to your warrior two. Open up your arms, straighten your right leg, Trikonasana, triangle pose. Aligning your left arm over your right one. And you can just look down to the floor. We're gonna come from here into our pigeon pose. Actually, let's do one more pose before that one. So bend into that front knee, lift your back knee off the mat, and then you can drop it down. And we're going to add a quad stretch here. Left hand stays where it is. Reach your right hand back. See if you can grab a hold of that left foot and pull it in towards your glute. Try to keep your hips nice and heavy. Really getting deeper into our quads, into our thighs. Let's carefully release. Now let's transition into our pigeon pose. So you can toe heel that foot over to the side of your mat. Square off the pelvis. Any variation, if you wanna work on mermaid or king pigeon, you can go into it. I'm just gonna fold straight down. We'll stay a good, slow 10 breaths here. Really just inviting our right hip to relax and release a little more. So find that natural, smooth breath rhythm. Maybe inhaling for a count of three or four and exhaling for that same count. Relax your shoulders and your chest. Just notice what your practice brings up.
And you can just start to walk your hands in, lift your chest. We're gonna stay seated, coming into a half knee pile pose. So you can kind of just lean over onto your right hip and we're gonna extend our left leg out in front of us and now just cross your right thigh over the left one. So we're trying to, or we're trying to anchor and stack our right knee over the top of the left one. So like a half go mukasana cow face pose, really working on our hamstrings here. You can walk your hands forward and fold down. I think maybe in like the top five most intense stretches for me personally. So don't worry if you're not going very far into this one. Just a really, really wonderful way of targeting the posterior chain. Um, let's lift on up, uncross the legs, boat pose, navasana, any variation of this one that you would like. So knees can be bent or straight. Think of lifting your chest up towards the sky, drawing your shoulder blades back. And you can cross at the ankles, downward facing dog. Press it back, should feel really nice here. And maybe you hold where you are or you take your flow. Let's find this pose or this sequence over on the second side. Okay, left leg rises. Bend your left knee, open up your hip. Maybe you just choose to stay in this three-legged dog or you can flip over. Wild thing, left foot steps back behind you. Push into both legs. Reach that left arm up and over. Really challenging on <laughs> slippery carpet. Push down into that right hand. And we'll be moving into Virabhadrasana 2, your warrior 2. So your left foot steps to the top of the mat, back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat. Go ahead and lift on up. And really focus on pressing that left thigh open. We're gonna interlace our hands the more unusual way so you have your other thumb on top and then dive down, humble warrior. Relax your head, keep your hips nice and low. Let's push our feet into the floor to come back up. And you can straighten that left leg. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Reach your left arm forward and down, right arm up to the sky. Look down to help with balance a little here. You're gonna bend into that front knee. We'll take our low lunge with a quad stretch. So you can lift your back heel off the floor, drop your right knee to the mat and reach back with your left hand. See if you can pull that right heel in. Melting those hips forward and down. Let's carefully release, transitioning into your pigeon pose. Any variation, whatever you did on that first side, try to replicate it again here. 10 deep breaths, just to melt. And really noticing what your internal dialogue is like when things get hard, especially when we're doing something, you know, it's an hour long practice. It does tend to bring some stuff up. This is the point of yoga. How can you really sit with challenge, with difficulty, with tension, with things not going your way? 
Can you step out of this critical, judgmental, or comparing egoic mind? Develop that presence and awareness. Knowing that you can absolutely do hard things. And that we want things to come up for us throughout our practice. This is a wonderful way to process mental and emotional blocks. As well as, of course, working on strengthening and opening our physical bodies. Walk your hands in so you can lift up and we'll find that half knee pile pose. So you can just rock over onto your left hip. Swing that right leg out in front of you and you're going to try to stack your left knee over your right one here as much as possible and fold on down. And I say fold <laughs> very loosely, just kind of intend your chest and your spine to melt down. So embracing the fullness of the experience, regardless of the emotions that come up. Come on up, Navasana Boat Pose. Last little bit of core strength here. Any arm variation that you want. And we'll cross at the ankles, downward facing dog, holding here or taking your flow. And we all meet back in this down dog and we'll just walk our feet to the top of the mat. You can bend your knees generously, push into your heels, roll all the way up to stand inch by inch, shrug your shoulders down and away. Let's open up our feet and legs and find your little goddess temple pose here. So heels in, toes out, you can open up your arms and we'll bend the elbows, bend the knees. Really think of squeezing those thighs open pressing the floating ribs in. Sink it down a little lower and we'll find Skandasana. So you can bring your hands down to the mat. You're gonna bend into that right knee, left leg is straight. Sink down as low as you can here. Over to the other side. Left knee bends, right leg straightens, flex into that foot. And we'll just come through to center into your wide-legged forward fold. Any variation with the arms, any variation of this pose that you prefer. And maybe you'd like to stay here if you want to add a headstand. This is a great pose to come into it. You can interlace your hands. And delicately placing crown of the head, however you want to get there. Keep your gaze steady. Shoot the energy up through your toes. You can come out gently, same way you got into it. Meeting back in this wide-legged forward fold. Shake out your head. And just toe heel your feet a little bit closer towards one another. Bend into your knees and come all the way back down. So we'll start to slow down our practice, cooling things off. Keep your left foot to the inside of your thigh. Reach your right leg up and over and find a side body stretch. Left arm reaching up overhead. Roll your left shoulder back. Lifting up, baby wild thing, left hand back, press your hips up, right arm stretches up and over. 
Let your hips come back down. Turn to face towards your right knee and right shin. Fold in. Coming up, we'll just do the same thing over on the second side. Right foot to the inner thigh, left leg out. Let's start with a side bend, right arm up and over. Relax your neck and your head. Using a little effort here. And you can come back up, right hand to the mat. Reach your hips, reach that left arm up and back. A little counter twist, counter stretch. Hips come back to the floor. You're gonna face over towards your left leg and fold on down. Go ahead and lift back up through to center. And this time let's open up both legs into our straddle fold. And we're gonna dive directly forward. Walk your hands out in front of you. 10 slow, steady breaths here. Just letting gravity take you deeper into the pose. See if you can melt your head down a little lower. Walk your hands in. And you can use your hands to help your knees bend and just come to take a seat in any way that's comfortable for you. We'll stretch into our upper back and shoulders a little more, taking your Garudasana eagle arms. So bend your elbows out at a 90 degree angle, wrap your right arm under your left, maybe also wrap at the wrists. And I want you to push your shoulders down, lift your elbows up without lifting the shoulders, and then move your hands away from your face. Keep pushing your forms towards one another and you can dip your chin to your chest. Breathe through your upper back. And lift your head up, open up your arms. Let's find a side bend, right arm reaches up and over. Inhale, lift back up, same thing to the other side. Coming back through to center, eagle arms to the other side. So bend your elbows, left arm under the right this time, binding once or twice, shoulders down, elbows up, hands move away from you, and then maybe tuck your chin to your chest. Lift your head up, unwind, open up your arms. Let's take a little twist this time. Left hand to your right knee. And right hand to your left knee. Come back through to center and we're gonna lower all the way down onto our backs. Let's find bridge pose, just like what we did at the beginning of class, noticing if it feels a little bit different the second time around, so your feet are hip-width distance apart. Push your feet into the floor, squeeze through your glutes to find a nice lift here. 
push down into your shoulder blades without tightening or tensing up your neck or your jaw. And we'll release all the way. Cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee and pull it through. Your reclined pigeon pose. Squeeze it in. One last little squeeze here. Keep the figure four shape. You're just gonna let your left foot come down to the mat and then go ahead and drop that left thigh and your right foot so it's flat to the floor. We're trying to really target our outer right hip. You can push your knee with your left hand and reach your right arm out to the side. Lift back up and through to center, uncross the legs. We'll do those two poses on the other side. Reclined pigeon first, left ankle to your right knee. Pull that right thigh in. Can you soften and relax a little more in this pose? while still releasing tension from our left hip and left glute. We'll transition to our IT band stretch. So keep this figure four shape and just let your right foot be flat to the floor and you're just gonna drop over to the right. You can use your right hand to push your left knee away from you and extend your left arm out to the side. Breathe into your belly. Come all the way back up and through to center. And let's transition into our shoulder stand and also into our plow pose. I'm just readjusting on my mat here. So you can shrug your shoulders underneath you a little bit and you're gonna lift your hips up. You can support your lower back with your hands, trying to stack your hips somewhere <laughs> close towards your shoulders and aligning your feet over top. This pose can be a little hard for me because I do have my microphone, <laughs> my battery pack kind of in the way. So we just do our best. And maybe you want to stay here. You can transition into plow. Your hands can stay on your lower back. I usually like to keep them flat on the floor. And you can alternate bending the knees or keeping the legs straight. And we'll come out of this one really slowly. Support your hips and try not to slingshot up as you lower down. So really with control and releasing down. Cross your right thigh over your left. We'll take a spinal twist before coming to Shavasana. So you can move your hips over to the right, let both knees and thighs drop over to the left and you can reach your right arm out. If it, you want to twist at your neck, you can also look over your right shoulder. Five breaths here. Hmm. <sighs> 
Lift back up and through to center. Let's twist to the other side. Shift your hips to the left, left thigh over your right, and drop both knees down. Reach your left arm out and maybe look over your left shoulder. your head back up through to center uncross your legs and let's find shavasana our final resting pose take up space with your arms with your legs shrug your shoulders away from your ears and please don't skip shavasana at home it really does help to really integrate and process all of this work that we've done in this hour long practice. And this is such a beautiful invitation and opportunity for you to check in with yourself and notice how you feel, how your body is feeling physically, also where your mind is at, noticing what emotions might be present within you, or even what insight is coming up. There can be so much clarity offered to us in Shavasana. So we'll stay here for a few more minutes of silence and stillness. And I'll let you know when it's time to come out. Take a big breath in through your nose and sigh it out your mouth. <sighs> Inviting some movement back into your body. We'll gently wake ourselves back up. And you can stretch your arms overhead like what we had at the beginning of class. Lengthening out here. You can roll to one side, press to come up, sit in any way that is comfortable to you. Try to really stay present and focused, close your eyes, try not to fidget too much, hands at your heart. 
taking a moment to really thank yourself, to show yourself gratitude for this time you've carved out for your practice, caring for your body, for your mental and emotional health. Let's close by chanting OM together. Inhale to chant. Take a deep breath in. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing this hour-long vinyasa flow practice with me. Before you go, please do leave me a comment below, give the video a thumbs up, and just let me know how this practice went for you. Um, And let me know if you'd like more hour-long sessions. Um, Yeah, it was really wonderful to practice with you, and hopefully you'll join me again very soon.